Well, hello, model car fans. Welcome to the Muscle Car Modeler. My name is Ralph, and I was a little hesitant about doing this, but I posted it on there anyway that I had the opportunity to get an original kit and compare it to the brand new kit. And many of you said, yes, you would love to see that. And I was very curious myself. I did the video um, showcasing my kit against my vintage rebuilders, but now we can really go over uh, this kit, original and uh, current. And to me, that's definitely going to be quite interesting. And we'll definitely really get into it because this kit is 55 years old and it has not been reissued other than this. Now, if you know the kit's history, the tooling was modified into the 69. They had both hard tops and convertibles. I uh, understand there was interchangeable dies to do that. But it was really only issued the one time and then they had to retool it to issue it again now. So there are um, some differences, but even having the boxes here, you can see there are some differences. So it's really nice. I got to give a large shout out to uh, Marty Koffel here. These are his kits. I actually have his sealed kit as well since I opened mine. And since I did that video, I actually started working on it. So I pulled some parts off the trees and I pulled some parts off the trees as well to fit them to my rebuilders. Now this is his sealed kit and this is actually his sealed kit as well. And he offered them to me for this video and these purposes. So um, a loud, uh, huge shout out. Thank you to Marty Koffel for allowing me to do this. And even though I'll, I'll crack some jokes out and I'll point some things out, um, I'm gonna show this with huge respect. This is a very you know rare kit. Um, and this one is gonna surprise you. It's pretty original, it's still sealed inside. So my greasy fingers will be the first ones to actually touch the plastic in here on a good chunk of the parts. But getting into it here, I hold it with the highest respect and everything. And uh, uh, we're gonna dig into it and see what's going on. But first we'll start with the boxes. Obviously they went with the Retro Deluxe theme and this really is Retro Deluxe in my opinion. But look at the differences. I mean, obviously, you know, brighter color, but this box is not quite mint. It wasn't sealed outside, but it is sealed inside. But some noticeable differences. Super B, look at that. The, if you know it, there were no Super B convertibles from Dodge. Um, Roadrunner had some convertibles, but that was in 69 and 70. On um, Dodge, there were no Super B convertibles, period. Only Coronet RT convertibles. So it's funny that it says Super B. And it's got the Super B emblem on the stripe in the back, but this one does not. It is in the box, but this is Cornet Convertible. Convertible, RT, Dodge, Scat Pack. These emblems don't look any different um, as far as art goes. Um, this has the RT emblem in the grill, which is correct for the car, but the original has that Dodge TriStar in the front. But the Super B actually had Dodge letters, not that emblem. But there's no RT, and there's no that, and it's got the Super B license plate. This one does not have the Super B license plate. Another thing that I noticed right away, the RT is on the fender here, but it's not on this one. To me, that's a very curious. Like it doesn't have any RT emblems, but it has Super B emblems. Um, but again, not uh, Super B convertible. Hoods blacked out, which that's not factory stock. But again, this was before it was actually done. And look at these side pipes. There's some side pipes on this one that are not on this one. Other than that, they both say bonus haul away, trailer included, MPC 125th scale. So the rest of the box art, um, just pretty much uh, a reinterpretation, a carbon copy of it, but definitely uh, reinterpreted and still really, really cool. So getting into the side here, let's get on to this. Um, the sides, pretty much the same box art differences here and of course this model products corporation um mount clemens michigan this one's got different part number of course nbc logo is exactly the same other than the registered trademark logo which is not on this box but that's a sign of the times get into this here which i made some fun of this in my last video paint to match illustrations available at your dealer cement not included so don't go walking into your Dodge dealer and expect to be able to pull up pictures or probably just look at you and laugh at you. But that was talking about pick up a sales brochure, go pick that up and you can um, compare it and look at all the options in factory colors and everything. 
made in litho in the USA. This is designed in the USA. Kind of love that. Doesn't mean it's made here, just designed here. Um, it says the same at the top, almost. Four ways to build custom Super B. It says custom Super B. Super stock drag, injected drag, or stock. This one says four ways to build custom super stock drag, injected drag, or stock convertible. Doesn't say anything about Super B on this one. Stock Cornet RT convertible version with 20 piece transport trailer included. So pretty much the same word for word there. And uh, interesting that there's some chrome on the scoops here. There shouldn't be, but the RT emblem is on both boxes here. So even the original has RT there and RT there, but it's just showing the stock RT. This panel is pretty much the same, except for one noticeable difference. That's in white and that's in black. I thought that was kind of interesting. But again, the Super B, the same art as the front and all the same stuff. And then now this side panel. Try and get the glare not to show. It was pretty much all there. 440 Magnum engine, stock or racing versions, plus clear bubble hood scoop. This says 440 Magnum engines, plural, singular, plural, stock and racing versions, plus clear bubble hood scoop. All the rest of the stuff is all pretty much the same. With the exception is this one does not have the pipes and this one does have the pipes but everything else is all there you know designed in the usa but doesn't say anything else there and of course you know the bottom of the box there's nothing here and then of course the new one shows all the contents on the bottom of the box and it's licensed by dodge of course but quite interesting so we'll get to opening these up here real soon well let's get to opening these up but uh, before we get to that, if you're looking for this kit, you're really interested in this kit, and you decide you, you want to get this kit, please check out our sponsor, Hobby Nut Models. I have a link in the video description below. Click on that and do some shopping. Anything you buy, actually, a small portion does come to the channel and support the channel. So I really do appreciate that. Uh, anything helps there. helps me produce these videos and come up with all of this content for you. But... Yeah, check them out, Hobby Nut Models, and anything that they have besides models. They have paints, supplies, and other stuff as well. So check that all out, and uh, we'll get moving on to this. Also, if you like this content and you really enjoy this stuff, please consider subscribing, hitting that like button and all that stuff. But uh, subscribe, and you can get our latest uploads, and hit that thumb button, and you'll get uh, you'll get notifications on the latest uploads. So let's... Uh, get into this one and so we'll break this one open and the reason i have a uh, marty's seal kit as i've mentioned i actually started mine and started assembling it and gluing it and taking parts off of the trees and even during the comparison video i did all of that so we're gonna get to opening this one so we'll start with this one first and get into it <clears throat> let's do it this way We'll do it that way so we can keep the box, the clear cellophane on the top portion here. I seen Marty has a bunch of his kits done that way. So I'm gonna respect his kit and open his that way as well. So we'll put that off to the side. And here you can clearly see the much more stronger trees. So first impression right in the box, you can see that. This kit on the other hand, this is quite interesting. Dun, dun, dun. Like I said, this is still sealed, but you can see the trees and some of the stuff and, and the interior. And check this out. This bag has not been opened at all. You know, check this out. I mean, it's kind of loose. You know, stuff's kind of bouncing around in there. You see some staining right there, whatever that's about. We'll get a closer look at that. But this bag has not been opened. And I'll tell you, I'm very reserved about actually opening this bag and my fingers being the first ones to touch it in 55 years. And as I just look in the bag at just the condition, you know, the windshield frame is not broken. The flash that's on this kit being, you know, an original kit and some of the other things here. And then that steering wheel is actually broken right there. So, hey, Marty, I didn't do that. I don't know if you knew that was in there, but uh, some of the other things that are going on in there and some of the loose parts that you see kind of, whoa, 
You guys see that? There's a stock seat. There's a stock seat. And there's a stock seat. There's one, one, two, three stock seats. Wow. That's interesting. And none of them are on a tree, but there, there's three of them in there. The custom seats. Here's the custom seats. So both the custom seats are in there. So we'll we'll uh open this bag in a little bit. Here's the chrome tree. Now this has been wrapped by somebody somewhere along the line to help preserve it. And some of the stuff is knocked around, but it doesn't look like anything's been knocked off. Here's the tires. Four stock tires, two trailer tires, two drag tires. This has the taillights and the windshield. I'm not sure what that is. Oh, the, the clear hood scoop. That's what that is. So there's the clear parts. And then the instructions. It'll be fun to go over these. Now, this was kind of interesting. This kit also has two sets of the factory decals and then the Super B decals. But we'll definitely look closer at that here in a minute. And then, uh, of course, this kit, you got the tires and axle sitting right there. One steel axle. It's kind of put together already somewhat right out of the box. Chassis, tub, here. There's a lot of parts and a lot of stuff that barely fits in this box. Even though the box is a little bit taller, but you can definitely see much more firm um, sprues compared to what's in that bag. The taillights, the clear parts, the trailer parts, and then the hoods, the rest of these parts, the chrome mirrors. So you definitely can see it's definitely a different chrome tree. And then, whoops, not mix them up. And then there's uh, the custom grill. That's why it has four headlights. Custom grill, well, four headlights, but custom grill has headlights too. Stock grill has headlights, and these are molded in. So both grills, headers. So definitely all new tree, nothing there. There's the side pipes. Wheels are completely different, so... It's going to be interesting to really look those up much closer. So let's take this out of the bag. I'm going to move some of the stuff to make the background a little clearer. So the actual 68 bumpers with the loops on the back to help hold it. Some velocity. Well, that's not the velocity stack. Those are for the headers right there and the headers. The chrome custom wheels, stock RT grill, the valve covers and oil pan, the alternator here, the custom grill, four velocity stacks, four more velocity stacks over here, the trailer mirrors, jack stands, lug wrench. And I like those side pipes, I really do. So we'll get this kind of up there close to you, hope it focuses. And then the intake here. I don't want any of this stuff to fall off. Try not to touch some of it. And of course, the modern interpretation of those parts. Now, mirrors, which they don't give you, all those velocity stacks. There's the Custom grill, console, stock grill, stock wheels, headers. So all the same parts, other than adding the outside rear view mirrors and a shifter. Pretty sure the shifter's on here too somewhere. Actually, yeah, it's right there, right on the very end. <clears throat> Weird spot for it, but I missed it the first time. But... 
all the same parts, but obviously new tooling. So there we go. Instructions, sheets, and decals. Let's get those out. Let's move this off to side here. So the instructions are pretty much the same as far as the pictures go. Really not seeing uh, anything there. Of course, the wording is going to be all different. Definitely giving you all the same vibe. Okay, move these decals for a second. Very delicate paper here. I don't want to tear it. I saw it already had a little bit of a tear. Oh, well, let's look all that over. Of course, the one-piece tub, custom hood, all those parts. It's a nice picture of the bottom. Although, that's a promo chassis because you can see that's all molded in. So look at that. It's kind of interesting. That picture right there. You can tell that's a promo chassis. You can see the engine and everything are molded right into that chassis pan. Interesting. But it shows you where the traction bars go for sure. The drive shaft loop. So some of that stuff. So let's see how the middle of this compares. Well, it has a vintage vibe, but definitely tweaked and done for this particular kit. And then the trailer page. That looks like it's just copied right from one to the other. Quite interesting. Very interesting. And let's see how the decals compare. Okay, so the u haulets look the same and about the same size. Super stock 440 Magnum. That's there and pretty pretty darn close in size and comparison. Gunnels, Performance Inc. So those are there. The Dodge RTs are there. A little bit different font and size. The 440 Sid 375. Oh no, they're there. They're right here. I didn't see them. So they're down there. The red stripe is there. The Hearst ones are there. MPC ones are different. Got the MPC ones like that. Champion. Champions are over there. STP. Interesting, it's all there but not exactly in the same format. Of course, this uh, Super B ones. But no Super B plates. I kind of have that one, though. That's really cool. I didn't notice that on mine originally. All right. Put that back in there. Sorry, I'm not rushing in. I'm not uh, pushing myself on this one. <clears throat> Here's the clear parts.
I know I didn't open my clear parts, but uh, we'll get a much closer look at this since they're on the trees. These, of course, have been preserved tissue paper and stuff. So here's the taillights, which they're completely different design. So there's the new ones and the old ones. I understand these are in the coupe kit, the bubble lights. And because they plan to make that kit, that's kind of why they're in the convertible kit, but they're there's no reason to block them off, but we'll see that kit when it comes down the road. But there's the original, with the custom taillight and the stock taillights. At least I think that's custom taillight. So let's see how the stock original, I mean the custom original scoop compares to the new one. This one's got four pegs to help line it and put it on, and this one does not. This one's really nice. There's some real minor scratches and flash on it, but that would polish out. Let's see how the windshields compare. Oh yeah, definitely a new windshield. This one's definitely thicker. The new one is thicker, has some mounting posts. This one's clearance for the tub, or this one, different shape. And I'm sure because of the design of the interior tub, that has a lot to do with it. Of course, some more of those clear bubbles, and then the four headlight lenses, which, you know, the original kit has chrome. Windshield is actually a little bit different shape. This one's a little more square than this one. This one's a bit round. I don't know if you can see that in the camera, if it's picking that up or not, but you can definitely see it looking at them in person here. So we'll uh, wrap this back up. All right, let's see the tires. <clears throat> There's a much smaller bag and they're crammed in there. One axle. This one uses uh, different mounting pins for the front. Huh. The axle is a completely different length, the metal axle there. See this one, yep, both axles. Okay, so they're, looks like same diameter, but different length. All right, let's see how the drag tires compare. These say Race Master 11 by 15. On both sides they're hollow these are these are not they're literally the same size but they're definitely different so there's the drag tires of course you can expect the tires to be different oh, how about the trailer tires 
So the trailer tires, Goodyear, something 7015, polyglass, wide tread. So polyglass, wide tread. Got some flash on those. Pretty nice, actually. And these are more of a pie cutter front tire. I've heard of these called pie cutters. Nothing really on them, but uh, definitely thinner. So there's the trailer tires. And of course, the originals. I always like these. Goodyear wide tread. F7015 polyglass white line. Nice tread. Not quite war warmed universally. A little bit of a warp to them. Against the original or the new ones. Which are also white line but... Same size, but definitely not the same. If I could hold on to them. But anyway, there's the tires. Let's put them all back away. Oh, and what the new kit doesn't have. These are those special screws. These are plastic screws with their funky thread. Of course, you know, seeing new ones that aren't rusted or stripped out from being screwed in or anything like that. But uh, new kit doesn't have these. It's interesting how they're kind of cast. It looks like they're broken right off of the cast. And you kind of see how the front is just kind of cut there. See if the camera's focusing on it. So there's some that the new kit doesn't have. All right. Let's make some more room here. Oh boy. This bag has not been opened. Just looking at that compared to all the individual bags and the trees and how little sprue is in there and how much has fallen off. That's just kind of kind of amazing. So all right, let's open this sealed inside kit that's been sealed for 55 years and now it's uh being opened for your entertainment i don't know if i can do this all right let's uh All right, body looks like it sits nice and square. But let's uh, do the bodies again, here we go. There's the original up top with the deep scallops here, which I tend to like those a bit more, although all the reference pictures I got said this body is actually much more accurate in that respect. Pentastar, the RT lettering, which are nice decals. These look a little bit faint. I like the way they look on this one and the Pentastar. I like the way the door handles look, especially when I look at fresh, crisp ones on a mold that hasn't been sanded, stripped, or repainted or anything compared to my rebuilders. It's kind of fun to see this vintage plastic that hasn't been sanded on and some of the sink marks that are part of it. 
the windshield frame or the ape or the vent window frame this one's got like the notch in there for the bolt the way it's shaped rocker moldings are on both of them wheel opening moldings there's the front grill and headlights these are often broken and glued to the original grill and have to be replaced when i'm doing a restoration of course this one's mint no mounting pins for the front bumper just kind of rest in that lip which is kind of a pain to glue it on this side's the same got the sink mark that is real common to these usually in the back and front the way it's molded here for the bumper yep all the same on the sides here whole tail panels tail lights are bigger and crisper on this one um, nice RTM is really deep. And the locks are a little bit bigger on the new one versus the old one, but they're both there. And then let's get this chassis out of the way. Let's keep the original or new parts over here. And then the insides of the body, you see new mounting pins for the rear bumper, which this one the rear bumper mounts to those where the screws go through. You can see they're much farther apart. Interior mounts. And then the studs for the windshield and the flat spots here for that windshield to sit in versus this windshield. And there's really no mounting pins up here. A little bit of flash, a little bit of trimming here from where it was part of the sprue. It's quite a bit of difference there. Let's move that. Of course, the interior tub. Completely different designs. And I was looking at, I'll get a tune on that one, the seat there. But, and then the way this one, this one has four strong mounting pins. So it'll mount directly to this chassis. This chassis has pins. So this is all positively located when you put it together. I was noticing some of this during mock-up. So there's no moving around where this one It'll move around quite a bit and, you know, getting the chassis centered, it's all about where you glue it. But that's positively located. All right, let's uh, spread some of these out here. There's that. <clears throat> this is all just crammed in here and Okay, so there's trailer and axle. So there's the boot, a lot of that stuff. Yeah, this steering wheel is broken right there. Hope you can get another one there, Marty. I'm sure the one in the donor kit. Trailer piece. Trailer. Here's the chassis with the screw holes. That when you compare the two chassis, which I, I did previously, just turn it around. Let's do it this way. So real similar, but screw holes, same gas tank, different way of mounting the axle on the thing, but all the markings pretty much match. But full wheel openings versus the open here. Same thing with this chassis. Uh, kept the simple suspension right there didn't change it but they changed the way this mounts so you don't have the axle going through the motor you got uh, plastic pins instead and then the engine compartments sides there kept a lot of the flavor but all redesigned okay so there's that that and that Hey, Marty got two hitches as well and four front seats. Here's another wheel back. So you got all the wheel backs, trailer ones, I guess trailer. There's the jack. That just looks like a piece of sprue. Two hitches, four front seats. That is interesting. Four front seats. 
Here's the gas can, firewall. Try not to knock anything off of the sprues here. There's a cylinder head and the other cylinder head. I know some mock the new one for its detail on the engine compartment, but this one has the original um, plain low horsepower 3D3 log manifolds as well. And it, the stock intake with no snorkel. See, a lot of times my kits, rebuilders, don't have the original engine, so I don't get to hardly see these parts. Two separate horns, a carburetor, um, overflow bottle or washer bottle, uh, the carburetor. So I've never really seen the horns before. There's the custom seats. All right, let's start uh, taking some of these parts out and comparing to the new kit. One thing I didn't see was the hood, a custom hood. Oh, wait. No, this one, the custom hood, you cut the hood out. Okay. But there's the stock hood and stock hood, which this one is missing the ridge here. And this one's got a nice pronounced ridge on the front. There's a custom hood. And it's got this scoop on this one. Where this one only has the clear one that I see. I don't see a scoop like this. Uh, let's see. Is that part here? Of course, a separate exhaust versus the original molded in exhaust. The axle looks the same. Kept that design with part of the transmission tail shaft here, drive shaft, the rear end. Kept the same lack of shocks, but the exhaust were separate parts. But Kind of kept the same flare on the exhaust as far as how they're made, just made them separate. Okay, radiator support, see how that compares. <clears throat> very, very similar, except for the tank is separate. Where this one, the original, the tank is not. All right. What else on this one? Oh. So that custom part is right there. Although the original is much more rounded or just the satin look where the custom taillight goes. That's interesting. All right. So Got the roll bar, the steering wheel. Steering wheels really look the same. Wheelbacks, of course, are modernized for that. There's the dash. Let's see how the dashes compare. They really do look the same. They mount differently. So, but definitely has the same vibe. This one, of course, where the steering column mounts is definitely revised. Custom seats, they look the same, although the new ones look just a tad bigger. Of course, they mount to the new chassis differently. But the custom seats, they look the same. See, I didn't have any of the custom parts to look at before. And of course, the stock seat, stock seats versus stock seat. And of course, the new firewall, and these are the mounts for the axle pins compared to the original firewall. So check that out. Got all the same vibe, but just redesigned them to make the new one. All right. There's the new header flanges, axle pins. There's the drive shaft loop, which is right here on this one. 
This one has the drive shaft loop right there, where this one has it as well, but that's more of a custom part, not really for the stock one. And the header flanges, real similar to each other. So definitely kept the same vibe going on there. All right. Of course, the engine and boot. I compared the boot to mine. Definitely tell that they're different tooling, but uh, very, very same design and everything. So then you got the intake. Let's see. There's the stock intake right there. And of course, the new one right there. Okay, so that pretty much is everything on that tree. And here's the engine block halves. So they kept the same style design with the automatic tranny and the block. Just really no hole in it, but definitely revised all of the mounting as far as how the parts fit together. Uh, the heads, the way they are. So they did pretty much copy the air cleaners from one to the other. You can see they're a little bit different, but they're there. The battery, let's see. The front water pump and timing cover set, real, real similar. Oh, that one has a distributor on it. This has a separate distributor on another tree. A blob for a carburetor, which are real close to each other as far as design goes. I mentioned those log manifolds, so the original definitely has those as well. Then the heads, two horns. And of course, the door panels and interior tub. Although I've been looking at Cornet convertibles and I've, the couple of them I've seen where they take a picture of the back seat. This definitely looks more accurate to the back seat. This one, not really sure what was going on there, but the Cornet RT convertibles didn't have this pattern. So I didn't see any of that. So I'm not really sure what happened quite there. But there's the door panels. And this has the emblem there, Coronet RT emblem. I don't know why that's not on these. It's not on a decal sheet or anywhere that I've seen, but they're not there. But the way this is made is definitely more accurate to the convertible uh, than this way. All right, and that concludes all of those parts. So let's see how the trailer stuff compares. I had some comments on the trailer portion, not realizing that the original kit had a trailer. Um, I've never had the trailer, so this is my first time looking at the original parts, even though that axle is about to fall off. Um, but it does look a lot like the axle that is on there. Same thing with the leaf springs, mounts, top of the toolbox, this door. It's got a diamond plate floor on the original that this one doesn't have it's probably a separate part which i don't quite see so that's interesting top of the toolbox looks the same there's the bottom of the toolbox which i saw over here there's the bottom of the toolbox matches up so i'll set that down so definitely one difference no diamond plate on the bottom there Jack handle, which is on this tree. All right, got the three screw holes and everything. The race racks. There's the leaf springs and mounts. So I thought this was interesting on mine. Here's the gas cam, but I don't see any neck there. So I thought that was interesting. But on this one, it's kind of there, little little dot there. That's missing. Looks like some roll bar parts. Not sure what these are. Here's the sides. Those are the originals. Here's the new ones. Don't really know what happened there. Kind of a smudge. 
let's turn it around this way. That looks like it's the outside. So there we go. There's the outsides. <laughs> one's molded with the insides out, and the other one's, or the top's molded in, and the other one's top's molded out. There's the back. Here's the hitch. Hmm. The jack. Got that door. Hmm. Well, bolt holes are all definitely bigger on the new one, but they're all there. Same thing with this one. They're there, um, but they're they are bigger than this one, and they're spaced differently. Quite interesting. Well, there we are. So everything is definitely all new tooling between the two. So quite interesting to see the differences between the original kit and the um, Retro Deluxe, which is really just a reproduction. So it's definitely interesting to see what they went through, what they did to redesign, update the tooling just a little bit here and there just to make it a little bit better, but keep all of the flair and all the original stuff. So it's definitely got all of the same parts and uh, quality in, on this one is definitely a bit higher uh, as far as some of that stuff. But then again, there's 55 years between this kit and that kit. And it's just kind of funny that there are extra parts, two sets of seats and everything. So that to me is hilarious, um, but I'd rather have that instead of the quality control. And it's kind of sad to me to think of what I went through back then to find original seats for some of mine um, because for whatever reason a lot of mine had the custom seats glued in and not the stock seats and here this kid's got two sets of stock seats so that that to me is hilarious a couple of hitches so extra parts in, in this one i didn't see anything missing uh, which is really really cool and again um huge shout out to marty he's uh, offered this to a display so i can share it with all of you guys uh, really cool and love that idea. He has other vintage kits as well and said the possibility of uh, sharing them with you um, is out there. And uh, hopefully, you know, I didn't uh, mess anything up here or anything. But full disclaimer, everything's on camera. <laughs> you guys, you guys saw it all. But uh, to me, just having a, a Mopar kit royalty here as a vintage kit and being able to open it, even though I was at crossroads with doing that because... I've been there, I've had some nice kits, but I dream of building them. And he said the same thing. He, he's had this kit, dreams of building it, and he's gonna uh, do that eventually. But now he's got this kit. So it's kind of funny to see which one you build first, Marty. I'm looking forward to seeing that one. So um, you guys, thank you for taking the time and watching over this video. I'm gonna pack this back up carefully and, and everything and uh, give it back to Marty and everything. So huge shout out to Marty. Thank you very much. You guys, uh, I hope you appreciate it. And thank you for your uh, comments, your subscriptions, and your likes, and hitting that bell button and everything. I really do appreciate it. You guys have a wonderful weekend, and I will see you next Saturday.